One of Google's newest ranking factors is Core Web Vitals. Core Web Vitals represents three different metrics that look at and analyze your website's user experience. In this video, let's talk about one of those three metrics, Cumulative Layout Shift, or CLS. Cumulative Layout Shift is the amount that the page layout shifts or moves during the loading of the website. This is a score that's rated from zero to one, where zero means that there's no shifting at all happening, and one means that almost everything is moving around the page. The real key idea within cumulative layout shift is that we're trying to measure visual stability. So the real key question to address is if elements on a page shift or move around in a way that presents a problem for users. And the key phrase there is a problem for users. So that means that not all shifting is necessarily bad. Shifting is fine if it happens in response to a user's actions. Let's say that somebody clicks on a menu button on your website and a flyout menu appears listing more options. Well, that's okay. That doesn't factor into the CLS score because that layout shift was expected. Cumulative layout shift is really trying to look at and understand unexpected layout shifts that occur, especially unexpected layout shifts that could really disrupt something about how people are using that website. So let's go to an example and really see what a layout shift looks like. You can see on this page, the ad appears at the top of the screen, pushing everything down, but then the ad goes away, causing everything to shift back up. You can see this shifting more clearly if we take that video screen by screen. And you can really see that that image moves up and down quite a bit while the page is loading. And as a result, so does the text and everything else on the page. And that kind of shifting is a problem. If you were actually trying to read that article while all that shifting was going on, you would have a hard time doing so. And that's the kind of shifting that we want to avoid. And that's the kind of shifting that CLS is really trying to measure. CLS breaks out into three different buckets, good, needs improvement, and poor. A good CLS score is less than 0.1. A needs improvement score is somewhere between 0.1 to 0.25. And a poor CLS score is 0.25. So a lower CLS score is always better for your visitors. Now that's easy enough to understand that we're aiming to get this metric closer to zero. But what does this metric really tell us? The other Core Web Vitals metrics are measured in milliseconds or seconds, something that we can more easily understand. So I want to give you just a little detail about the formula that calculates the cumulative layout shift score, so that way you can have a little bit of intuition around what this number really means. There's two things that go into the CLS score. The first is the impact fraction. The impact fraction measures how much space a shifting element uses on the screen. So if you have a 300 pixel item that's shifting around the screen, that's going to cause a bigger impact than a 100 pixel item shifting around the screen. So if you have a higher CLS score, that probably means you have a big item moving around the screen. The second metric that goes into the CLS score is the distance fraction. The distance fraction measures how much that shifting element moves. If something only moves one or two pixels, that's not such a big deal. If something moves 50 pixels or 100 pixels, that causes a lot of other elements to move quite a bit on the screen as well, presenting a bigger problem. All right, so now that we understand something about the CLS score, how do we know if we have a CLS issue? One of the best ways to tell is to visually watch your website as it loads. As your website is loading, do you see items moving around the page? Do you see some shifting occurring? I would recommend you check this at different connection speeds. Sometimes you won't see the shifting on a higher connection, but you will see it on a slower connection speed. If you see that shifting occurring, then you know you have a problem to fix. Along with visually watching our website, we can also test our website out using PageSpeed Insights. We can also check Google Search Console's Core Web Vitals report, and we can also use Google Chrome's DevTools. Let's talk about each of these, starting with PageSpeed Insights. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of how you use PageSpeed Insights. So if you're not familiar with the PageSpeed Insights tool, we made a whole separate video just about that, going into all the details and all the metrics you can find here. To find cumulative layout shift, you begin by putting in your website's URL. And then once the report loads on either mobile or desktop, you can see what your cumulative layout shift score is. 
in this website's case, it's 0 0.56. Now, along with looking at the overall CLS number, 0 0.56 in this case, we can also see a distribution graph. This distribution graph tells us the different experiences people had who visited our website. So we can see that 40% of people who visited this particular page saw very little or almost no layout shifting occurring. 17% of people saw a little bit of layout shifting. They were in that middle category, that needs improvement category. But 43% of people saw quite a bit of layout shifting. What the 0 0.56 represents is the 75th percentile. And that's what Google's aiming for here. They want the majority of people who come to your website to see little to no shifting occurring. Google realizes that there will be some problems with certain browsers, certain connection speeds that might cause some shifting to occur. That's okay, but you wanna make sure that the majority of people who visit your website don't have any problems. In this website's case, only 40% of people who visited this website had no CLS problems, the large majority of people who did visit this website, about 60%, did have CLS problems, which would mean this particular website needs to fix some things on this page as it relates to CLS. We can also look at CLS scores in Google Search Console's Core Web Vitals report. If you aren't familiar with Google Search Console or don't know how to access the Core Web Vitals report in Google Search Console, we made a whole separate video all about this report and all the ways that you can use it to understand CLS and the other Core Web Vitals metrics. Once you go to the Core Web Vitals report, you can view details on either mobile or desktop. And then once you're there, you can see all the different Core Web Vitals issues that might be present, including CLS issues. You can click on this CLS issues item listed here to see which pages are affected. Finally, we can also look at this in Google Chrome's DevTools. To access Google Chrome's DevTools, you wanna right click on the web page that you're looking at and inspect. Once you're here, you want to turn on the rendering section. So you can hit the triple dots over on the far right side, then go to more tools, and then select rendering. Once you do this, the rendering menu will appear. And from here, you can click on layout shift regions. Once you click on layout shift regions, you can refresh your website's page, and then it will highlight the items that are shifting around the page. This will help you identify which elements on your website are causing the shifting to occur. I won't go into details here, but you can also get more detailed insights under the network tab about CLS and which items are shifting around. So now we've run the reports and we know that we have a CLS issue present. What do we do? How do we fix CLS problems? One thing that you can do is you can try to adjust the load order to avoid shifting. Think back to that example we were looking at where the ad loaded in and it caused everything to move down the page. That happened because the ad loaded last. When that ad loaded in, it needed room, so it made room by pushing everything else out of the way. Instead, we could try and get that ad to load first. That way it shows up, and then everything else below it shows up. That way it doesn't have anything to push down the page when that ad shows up. Of course, it's not always an option, especially something like an ad that's coming from a third party. You don't have a lot of control over when that loads in. If you can't adjust the load order to avoid shifting, you can also look to see if you can change the shifting so that way it occurs in response to a visitor's action. For example, if you have a large image that shows up on your website and that's causing shifting to occur and you can't change something about the load order to make that image load up faster, maybe you can put that image behind a show hide functionality for your visitors. If they click on the show button, they see the image. If they hide it, they don't see the image. And when they click show and hide, sure, things might shift around the page, but now that's in response to a visitor's actions, which makes the shifting expected instead of unexpected, reducing your CLS score. If that isn't an option, the other thing you might wanna do is remove the shifting element altogether. Of course, removing the shifting element altogether isn't an option if that shifting element is something like an ad. Chances are you need that ad in order to generate revenue for your business. Given all that, one of the best ways to fix CLS issues is to put in placeholders. And we can see this in this example page that we've been looking at. Yeah, the ad at the top caused shifting to occur, but the ad on the side did not. And we can see why. When the page initially loads in, there's already space reserved for that ad. And because that space is already reserved for the ad, nothing else is there. 
When the ad shows up, it simply fills in that empty space. It doesn't cause anything else to shift around the page. And likely the same thing could be done for the ad at the top of the page as well. Create that empty space and then fill it instead of allowing that element to load in and cause shifting to occur on your website. The main takeaway here is you want to reduce unexpected shifting as much as possible on your website. You want to create a website design that's more visually stable. And on that CLS measurement, you want to aim for a score of 0.1 or less. If you want more technical details about CLS or you want any technical resources to share with your developers, these resources from Google and web.dev are highly recommended. If you have any questions about CLS, Core Web Vitals, or other tech SEO subjects, please let me know. You can email me at matthew at elementive.com. If you liked this video and would like to see more like it from Elementive, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.